All right, I'm gonna throw a simple bowl here. I'm throwing on a bat just because I was throwing other things on a bat earlier. So I've got my bat pins in. Oh, maybe. Huh, tape bat. So I'm gonna throw a bowl here. So I'm going to get the clay centered. I'm coning up to center it. Then I'm going to bring it back down. I am sitting close to the wheel head. My legs are right up against the wheel uh, or against the splash pan. When I center, I've got my body over the clay. My elbows are against my legs or my body or my splash pan so that I'm not moving around too much. So I'm gonna center this clay lower, uh, wider than it is tall. So it's, it's uh, wider than it is tall. My bowl is going to come from here. And if it was narrower, it would come from here. It'd be a, a different shape of bowl. I'm just gonna make a fairly simple round uh, bowl here. So I've got my hands uh, braced on the side here. I'm going to uh, drill my hole, lean my shoulders over, drill my hole down here. I want to leave a quarter of an inch, half an inch or so uh, in my floor. And then, so I've drilled my hole, then I'm going to open out my wall. So I'm going to bring my fingertips towards my palm. Make sure you don't tip your hands as you do that. As soon as your right hand, your brace hand starts to want to bend and move, you're done. It's a fairly short process. Um, if, you did, if you didn't make a, a nice curve in the floor, you can come back with your fingers and uh, fix that, which is what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to start to pull up my wall. Now, when you pull up your wall, um, we tend to say you have a, a point on the outside, point on the inside. Fingertip to fingertip, knuckle to knuckle, uh, could be, or sorry, knuckle to fingertip, knuckle to knuckle, if that's comfortable for you. Um, the important thing being that you're not using your whole palm. You don't want to pull up the wall like this, because this hand doesn't have as much uh, control. You can't be as, as uh, um, specific about where your pressure is. So I am going to actually use a sponge on the outside. It's a damp sponge. I'm going to use my finger behind it. And across from that finger on the inside wall is another finger, my other hand. Notice that my hands aren't held like this. They're held across from each other close like this. And so as I squeeze, um, I'm, uh, these fingers aren't separating away from each other. They're coming up together. I'm going to dribble a little bit of water over the side there. And then I'm going to pull these guys up. Now, if I keep my fingertips directly across from one another, let me get the water out while I talk. If I keep my fingertips directly across from each other, ideally the pressure's the same on either side and my wall comes straight up. If I wanna make a bowl shape, I'm actually gonna increase the pressure on the inside a little bit and I'm gonna lift my fingertips a little bit higher. So if you put your fingertips across from each other and you watch that outside wall, you'll see that naturally you tend to lift that inside finger a little bit. So I am going to do that on my next pull. A little bit more pressure and I'm leaning out. My fingertips are a little bit higher. And you see how that wall comes out. That wall sort of naturally starts to lean that way. I've got plenty of clay down here. My wall is fairly even through here, but I've got a lot of clay here and I can actually grab some of that clay. I can get those, that bottom finger underneath there and I can bring some of that clay up into my wall um, to increase the size of my piece a little. Now I've been getting the water out of the inside with a sponge so that my floor doesn't absorb too much water and end up cracking. I've also been compressing my rim. I can do that by keeping two fingers around it to hold it up and the other finger pushes down. Or I can fold my sponge around my thumb and compress the wall that way. I'm now going to get a rib on the inside. This is a metal rib, a uh, small rubber rib works as well, one of the round <laughs> mud rib tools like this. Mine's fairly dirty. Um, but I'm gonna hold this down low. I'm gonna use the curve of my rib and I'm gonna press it against the clay. I'm not straight up and down. I'm back like this so it's pushing down on the clay um, like I'm practicing here on the, on the bat. So I'm gonna push that down on the clay work from the outside to the inside or from the inside to the outside, let up my pressure as I get into the wall, and I'm trying to create a nice gentle curve on my insi the inside of my wall there. 
Now I'm going to do one other thing on this piece. I'm going to create a, uh, a sort of wiggly decorative rim. And so I'm going to actually lean this rim out. I'm just using pressure of my top finger and my sponge uh, with my thumb underneath to get that wall to lean out that way. I'm going to get my water out of the inside, and then if I want to, I can use a rib to kind of straighten up and make a, a more distinct edge between my interior and my rim here. So this is just a decorative choice that you can decide to do. It's not obviously not something you have to do. And uh, sometimes when people do this, they like to do some shaping of it. I'm going to undercut my uh, clay underneath first, and then I'm going to show you the shaping. All right, so I'm gonna just take the edge of a rib, a wooden rib or a wooden knife, something like that. I like the, the slightly wider uh, corner that I'm gonna use here. And I'm simply gonna bend this uh, bowl up in a few places. I'm trying to uh, do this half and half. So I, I make a line and then I do a line, or I make a push in and I do a push in directly across from it and then I split that in half. You can use a guide, you can actually measure this out on a disc underneath, and they sell these discs underneath, but I'm just kind of um, guessing at where this goes. If you don't feel like that's got enough lift, you can come in with your finger and redo some of those edges, depending on the size of the mark and how, uh, how sort of sharp you want that corner. Um, you can use your rib or you can use your finger or something like that. And so now I just have a little kind of flowery effect going on on the outside. I'm going to run my wire through underneath this, and then I should be able to either take the bat off or just slide this right off the bat and put it up onto my board. <laughs> 